right, we're back. Back in downtown LA. Well, not downtown LA, but we're in LA. Anyway, so today, this, is, this guy right here is the problem. Uh, so, we had a little heat wave. It's actually kind of cold right now. It's about 69, 70 degrees right now. Um, so it's a nice day to be up on the roof. Plus I got me some shade. Of course the electrical panel's on the other side. Anyway, um, so anyway the complaint is is that it stopped cooling, wasn't blowing any air um, on one of our uh, random heat days. And uh, now it's working sort of. It's like I got about a 10 degree delta uh, between supply and return. Uh, so I came up here. I already got the uh, job, the job league probes in there. Uh, so it's looking like we're low on charge. So we have a high superheat, uh, somewhat low subcooling. I think the target's 12. Suction pressure's low, and this is actually our discharge, and that's pretty low. So I would expect the liquid line to be saturating about you know 20 degrees above ambient. Whoops, uh, which is about 70. So we want to see about you know about 90-ish on the liquid line but this is a discharge so it should be a little bit higher than that uh so yeah it's looking like it's pretty low but this is a a, a three phase four ton package unit um so we're going to check all the obvious stuff we're going to check all the electrical before we start talking about charging it but i suspect there's a leak and as you probably already know i've already checked all this uh so here is our filter access isn't that nice no screws nothing anyway I'm seeing some signs of uh, refrigerant leak. So I got the good old H10 Pro, which I'm gonna go over this and check it and get these filters out here. I don't know if that, yeah, I think they'll show up on the camera, but you see these lines here? Most likely that's compressor oil. So it's, these are possibilities. Uh, they could possibly be leaks. They might not be, but I mean, they could be. So we're gonna check it just to cover our bases. I'm gonna check all the obvious spots, make sure nothing's rubbing up against anything. Uh, this guy's not vibrating too crazy. Uh, so the coil is not plugged or anything. We're going to check the blower, see how that's doing, make sure the belt's good, make sure the speed's good. Um, and then we'll check all the electrical stuff too, just to be safe. But uh, yeah. And I got the probes back here. I have this panel on, that way it's not sucking air through here. I want it sucking air through the condenser coil. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there, but yeah. My probes are in there. I don't think you can see them, but anyway. So this right here, this is our electrical panel. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you saw this. Uh, this is the instruction manual. It was sitting right here, right next to the burners, which is awesome. Didn't try to find a better spot for that because, uh, you know, last time I checked paper burns. Um, but anyway, we're gonna just check all this stuff too, just to cover all our bases. So I'm gonna open this up, check the blower, check the uh, pulleys, check the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, belts and all that good stuff. Amp draws, all that good stuff before we even start putting refrigerant in. We basically, it's a process of elimination, so we want to eliminate any other possibility before we mess with the charge. And this condenser coil doesn't look too bad. I've seen a lot worse. It's not falling apart. Yep, still good. Yep. So, let's see. So, yeah, we can't tell, but this might be a split coil. So we're gonna check in between it, but we'll see. I'll be able to tell when I open up this panel again, see if it's a split row. Um, split row, so basically there's another coil behind here, possibly, I have to double check, but sometimes, you know, between the coils, a bunch of gunk gets caught up in there. Yeah, HVACR videos, woo, shout out. Anyway, um, yeah, he's the, the, the split coil king guy. Anyway, um, here we go. Okay, so we're just going to check for voltage real quick, make sure it's working. So this is a 208 three phase. Uh, so this doesn't have a three pole contactor. It's actually the third phase is wire, nut, wire nutted directly into the uh, compressor, which is really annoying. But sometimes if you're lucky, you can kind of just stick that in there. Okay, so we're going to go to A to B. So yeah, we're getting 206, so we go to the next one. Mm, 206. Alright, so now we go ahead and take that out, and we're going to go between these two. And we are at 
206. So all three phases we're getting. It's pretty even for the most part. You gotta love how they just got the, you know, how there's no ground. It's just hanging out. It's touching metal at least, but there's actually no ground coming in from the service. Uh, shame on you guys. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we're you know we're just gonna now if, you can actually check voltage drop if you go across these contacts here it should be somewhat zero so this is the uh, HS 36 so you know it's never gonna show you zero but if you saw the little M that means it's like milliamps or something like that so I'm not too worried as long as it's not showing a voltage so yeah no voltage drops so the contacts are probably good uh, we'll ohm out the coil too just because we're gonna check that capacitor which is for the condenser fan motor we're gonna check run amp so I'm gonna get my clamp pretty soon but let me just make sure I'm getting good 24 yeah so I'm getting about 25 volts 25.8 volts on my transformer so that's good so voltage wise we're looking good what is this oh that's a timer thing so anyway we're gonna get set up to check our amps okay so we got our HS 36 we're gonna switch her over to the little claw thing we've installed our claw the nice thing is it's got this little dimple thingy so you can use it to move wires out the way without getting shocked. I don't know about you, but I always like to not get shocked. So this little black wire right here, that's what we're going to be checking. That goes to our blower motor. I know it's tight, so be careful. Show. Okay, that doesn't seem right. Oh yeah, I guess that is right. Yeah, so our uh, our blower motor is only running at two amps, two point one amps. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at our nomen nomenclature. I think that's how you say it. So let me see here. Uh, where is it? Fan motor. Outdoor. Point seven. That's our condenser. So 4.9 is our max, so it's under, it's under loaded. So we gotta take a look at that and see what's going on with that. Uh, so we're gonna check our condenser fan motor. Yeah, that can't be right. There we go. Okay, so we're at 0.5. Looks like my clamp's messed up. Awesome. Let's try it now. Uh, yeah, that's better. Just wasn't on tight enough. All right, so 0.5 is on our condenser fan motor. We're going to recheck this guy here. And we are at still 2.1. Okay, let's check our compressor. Let's see if I can do this without getting shocked. So we are at 11.5. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm going to see what's going on with that uh, blower motor, though. It's moving a big piece of heavy metal, so it should be probably running a little bit higher than that, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and open that up and check it out and see what's up. Alrighty, so we got our blower open. Um, let's check out that pulley. Yeah, it's way open. So, the reason why I'm mentioning that is... When you want to adjust the fan speed on these, you can actually adjust the pulley to adjust the speed. Um, so I think uh, when you open it, like you know, it, it spreads like that. That slows it down, and then when you tighten it, that speeds it up. And you can do this. You can get away with it because uh, you know, as long as it stays within that 4.2 amp draw, you don't want to go above that. So. Yeah, and then that, that's our coil back there, which also has oil stains. And then I don't like this. I can't see it in person, but in the camera, I can actually see little pieces of the, the belt flopping around. So we're going to go ahead and shut this off and check a few more things. So this is nice. It's got a little disconnect here. I'm not going to use it because I don't want to break it because it probably breaks. So we'll break this one instead. Okay, yeah, so this this belt is haggard. Yeah. Oh yeah, the whole thing's cracked. I don't know if you can see that. 
Oh yeah, she's already starting to split. And then I don't know who, or what adjusted that thing. I mean, Jesus, that's like all the way open. Look at that, all the way open. Let's see if we got any grooves. All right, so we got it off, um, but yeah, check that out. That is some grooveness. So anyway, um, bearings seem to be okay. Everything's spinning nice and freely. So I'm not too worried about that, but this belt, ugh. This belt's and I mean, I've seen worse, but yeah, I think we should probably change it. Could be better. There's a lot of cracks in it. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. Better safer than sorry, and usually when I replace this, I'll always put a spare in there, that way, you know, next time you don't have to run to the parts house. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna check the capacitor. This has been changed before, obviously. This is not the original, because it was just hanging there. This is the old uh, mount for the old one. <laughs> so we switch our, our meter over to MFD for microfarads. This one's supposed to be 20 microfarads, and it's pretty ugly and dirty and nasty. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but we're gonna check her anyway. And this one takes a minute to get up there, so. Yeah, 19.6, so it's not bad. It's not bad. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it, but it's not bad. It doesn't need to be replaced. Um, now, according to this, though, um, I don't know if you can see that. See how it says plus minus 5%? So you figure out what 5% of 20 is, um, and you subtract it, or you add it, so that pretty much gives you your range, as long as it's within range or good. If it's out of range, recommend replacement, just to cover yourself, because it could go out the next day. It might last another five years, but, you know, just mention it. You don't have to push it on them, but, you know, mention it. Cover your butt. That way if it does fail, hey, I told you so. <laughs> but anyway, um... This is what happens when I drink too much coffee. Uh, I get a little excited, but anyway. So we're gonna check that capacitor over there. And then um, I'm gonna see about adjusting this pulley. I kinda want to, but I kinda don't at the same time. Because uh, these things can kinda be a pain. It's like a, a trial and error thing, and usually they never move the first time. So we'll see. We'll see, we'll see how I'm feeling. Uh, but the airflow is actually pretty good downstairs, so I might just leave it. Uh, but yeah, it's running at 2 amps, so I guess it's efficient. But anyway, that's the spot besides the point. Uh, okay, so we can go ahead and check that out. So I need my other hand, so we'll be right back. Okay, so for some reason I lost audio in this video, so um, I'm just going to be overdubbing the audio here. So pretty much I'm checking the microfarad reading for the uh, capacitor on the condenser fan motor. It tested out okay. Um, it was slightly off, but still within range. And then now I'm pointing to this motor here just for no reason at all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, pretty much I'm saying that you always I always check to see what the motor calls for as far as the type of capacitor required for that motor. Because um, sometimes, you know, people will change out a capacitor and then they'll change it and it doesn't match the motor. And then if you just put the same one in there, um, you know, it's still out of spec. So that just defeats the whole purpose. Okay, so I have the H10 Pro uh, Bloodhound. So I'm checking the evaporator coil. I'm checking all these streaks on the coil to see if I can find a leak, a refrigerant leak. Um... Unfortunately, again, I lost the audio on this video for some reason, which is really annoying. So, um, I'm actually watching this video while I'm recording. There, there's the, there's the beep now. So, um, pretty much I did find a leak. Uh, the H10 Pro did go off on one of these, uh, oil, oil, uh, oil stains here. Um, not this one that you're looking at right now, but the, the first one. And I did about three times. So, um, I would say that, oh, there it goes, see? So it just went off, and uh, I pulled it away just to reset it. But um, but yeah, so I did find a couple leaks on this coil. Okay, so thankfully, most of these units all use the same belt. So the last time I had changed a belt, I had an extra one that I stuck in the unit. So I went ahead and got it, it's the same one. So we got a 
A36, and this is a A36 or a 4L380, which, yeah. Well, we'll see, whatever. It's gonna be better than what we got on there anyway. So anyway, we're gonna take this off. Um, just try to do this one-handed, just like that. There you go, whoop, came right off. Okay, so we take our new belt and uh, we're gonna pop it on there like that. Okay, Hold on, like that. And then we're gonna get part of it there and then just spin it. It's a lot easier to do two-handed, but you know, the pain I go through for you guys. Hopefully I don't pinch myself. But, well, I pinched myself, but luckily it was the glove and not the skin. And look at that, I like these new gloves. They don't rip. Anyway, so yeah. Ooh, that's a lot tighter too. Maybe a little too tight. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is just, ooh, it's stretchy. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah, that should be, that's gonna be much better. Yeah, we're gonna run it and see how it goes. Uh, we're gonna check the amp draws um, just to see how it's running. Uh, I'm a little worried that I might, I might, just maybe, I might have to adjust this because this feels a little, a little too tight for me. And yes, they can be too tight. It's like Goldilocks, it's gotta be just right. Not too, not too loose, not too tight. It has to be just right. So yeah, we're gonna, yeah, that, that worries me. I think it's a bit too tight. So we're gonna loosen that. Um, basically all you gotta do here is you just, uh, you know, loosen these guys and then slide it. So, but you know, it's a trial and error thing, so we might have to do it a few times. But anyway, um, I'm gonna get this thing all back together uh, after I adjust that. And I'm gonna need two hands, so I'm not gonna film that, but, uh, We'll uh, give it a shot and see what's up. So, yeah, that's that's really tight. Yeah, that's really tight. Anyway, here we go. All right, so we adjusted it just a spidge. Seems to be fine. Um, amp draw is better. 2.8. So yeah. And there goes the little packaging, which I gotta go chase down now. Anyway, we're gonna put this all back together and then we're gonna talk to our client and see what they wanna do. But yeah, at least that belt's replaced. All right, so we talked to our client. Again, it's a commercial building, so they gotta go through the proposal process, but it's looking like we might get a new system put in. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna put this back together and I'm gonna be on to the next, so thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. And make sure you visit our Facebook and our uh, Instagram. So it's uh, at NighthawkHVAC for Facebook and uh, Nighthawk underscore HVAC for Instagram. So I post a bunch of random stuff on there. So check it out and have a great one.